It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey, hey, folks. Today I'm taking a look at one of the expansions for Machi Koro here. This is the second expansion, Millionaire's Row. And Millionaire's Row here adds a few new cards, a few new concepts, and um, I'm going to be basically just giving you a real quick overview of what those things are, but I will not be teaching you how to play the base game. So if you need to figure that one out first, go take a look at one of our videos uh, for that, and then come on back and uh, I'll show you what Millionaire's Row adds. Probably a lot of money, right? Let's take a look. The Millionaire's Row expansion adds two new things and it basically focuses on big splashy cards. Cards that make you a lot of money. Even cards that basically shut themselves down for a really big boost and then they'll come back into play later on. So the two things it introduces are obviously new cards and a new way to buy and display those cards assuming of course you do not have and have not played the earlier expansion of Harbor. This one really is the one that introduced this but I'm assuming you don't have or have not played this. In that case the way this works is you shuffle up all the cards together and then you are going to display cards until you get 10 different piles. If you repeat like this, they go in the same stack. And so you keep flipping cards until there are 10 unique. There are some cards in here, by the way, from Harbor, just because I have everything uh, shuffled up together. But don't worry about that stuff. And so, let's see, no bakery, okay, that would be it. So you would do this, and then let's say I buy the apple orchard, okay? If this is gone, then I flip a new card. If it's a card that's already in play, then say this was a TV station, then I would cover it up like so, and I would continue flipping until there are 10 unique ones. And the game flows the exact same way, except what's available here will change and ebb and flow throughout the game. So, that's pretty much it. The other big thing the uh, game adds is the new cards themselves. And a lot of these cards, of the new ones here, take into account a new type of token, which are these little tokens here that will go on the cards and basically let you know the card is, uh, is under construction or is being repaired. And some of the cards are so good that they do this to themselves. They go into renovation on their own. So for example, let's take a look at the winery here. This one says, you get six coins for each vineyard you own on your turn only, then you close this building for renovation. It's so good that once you've done it, you put this token on it and it no longer works. The way this comes back into play is once you get that nine, so once this would trigger again, it doesn't trigger, Instead, it's done being renovated and ready to work again. Once it works one more time, boom, again, under renovation. So it would work every other time is simply what that means. So that's what the, the winery there does. We have over here the renovation company. And again, as I said, this expansion certainly kicks up the complexity of the game. You'll find a lot more text on these cards, typically more... Um, uh, complex interactions between the cards. This one, choose a non-purple building, one of these buildings. All buildings owned by any player of that type are closed for renovations. You get one coin for each player, from each player, for each of the buildings they just closed, okay? So this is pretty nasty. It shuts a bunch of stuff down. You're probably going to get some coins for it. Uh, you have over here the tech startup, which is an interesting card. This one lets you add money to it on your turn. At the end of each of your turns, you, you may place a coin on it, and whenever it hits, whenever you roll that 10, then that was your investment. You get that amount of money that's been sitting on here from all the players. That's awesome. Very powerful. 
the moving company here says you have to give a non-purple building that you own to another player. When you do, you get four coins. So this lets you, again, it's all about big splashy powers. Getting four coins is pretty good. And then uh, let's take a look here at the park. This one is, again, big and splashy, though I'm not sure I'm a big fan of this card. Not really a power I like. This one says redistribute all players' coins evenly among all players on your turn only. If there's an uneven amount, you uh, you take the coins from the you take coins from the bank to make up the difference. Okay, so this basically redistributes everyone's money, so everybody around the table has the same amount of money. Really strong, uh, a little too nasty, I think. I don't know, but that's what they do. And so again, big, splashy, powerful cards make up Millionaire's Row. I like what this expansion brings to the game, but I will say it's not an expansion for everyone. For one thing, the complexity that it adds, I think, pushes it just outside of that filler 30-minute category that the game did so well before, you know? Um, it's going to make it a little bit longer. It's going to make it a little bit more complex. All the text is going to slow you down a little bit. And so go into it knowing those things if you are interested. If you're someone that adores Machi Koro and you want a little more complexity, a little bit more time that comes with that complexity, then I say yes, go for it. I will say the method of setting up the 10 piles and not having the static, whatever it used to be, 15 or whatever it used to be, really adds a lot and I love that about it you know now te technically this game did not introduce that this expansion the harbor expansion did that first where you would set out 10 piles randomly as long as they didn't repeat and it sort of would change over the game and what I like about it a lot is that not everything is available all the time you see more cards sometimes you want a card and it's not available and I like all of that a lot so this is one I enjoy. I like the idea of, you know, super powerful cards that then shut down. I like the interactions that the game introduces. And um, the original expansion, the first expansion, I felt added some things that, well, go check out the review for that one if you want to hear some more thoughts on that. But... This one, I do recommend. I, I, I'll say I recommend it more than the other one. How about that? So, um, if you're looking for one expansion for Machi Koro, and you are looking for a little more complexity, not too much more time, then I would say Millionaire's Row is the way to go right now. So, check that one out. Millionaire's Row. Go see the, uh, the video overview for Harbor as well. And I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.